absolutely certain that was not conscious. Absolutely certain. But what's happening here is, in a way, the critic, you know, you the critic, or uh, Professor Kaiser the critic, is sort of being like, um, what happens in your first session directly affects your subsequent relationship with your students. We would like to suggest three general strategies which will help you nudge your students into a more active role. In the first session, discuss mutual expectations with your students. Different tutors and tutoring programs have different styles and rules. But in general, you need to remember that tutoring is a give and take relationship in which you and your students create an oral contract. Each of you owes it to the other to attend regularly, to come prepared, and to listen and be open to the other person's suggestions. And if you expect your students to take notes, do their homework, and most importantly, become independent, the students in turn have every right to expect you to be patient, sensitive to personal and cultural differences, and unless you feel the need for referral, to keep in confidence anything the students share with you. Clarifying actual expectations in the first session would prevent confusion and save the many headaches and disappointments that result from missed appointments and poorly prepared students or tutors. Here, an right. otherwise off, excellent tutor is getting off on the wrong foot. Physics. While I'm Sean clearly states I'm his expectations, we don't really hear from the students about their side of the oral contract. For the uh, first session, the thing that I always have to do is lay down the law, right, which is what I expect from you and, and what you can expect from me. Okay, it's very important that before you come to every section, you are prepared. Right. If I have to go over nothing but remedial material to bring you up to where you should be, it's not really a very good use of your time or my time. So you should read all the assigned material and you should try all the problems before you get to tutorial. Right. That does not mean that you have to understand everything. The long-term effect of not involving the students is that they may remain passively dependent. By way of contrast, notice how Gail not only deals with attendance policies, but also shows some humor and empathy. Okay, Robert, I'm Gail Smith, and um, I'm going to be your tutor for the rest of English, English 4. Um, I just wanted to tell you that, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, about like, just sort of like get attendance out of the way, if, if you can't make it, or if you think you're not going to be able to make it the day before or something. I'd like you to phone me the night before. Do you okay. do you have my number? Yeah, I would pick up the card. Okay. And I'll do the same for you. But I mean I understand emergencies like you wake up and you throw up so you can't go to school. <laughs> All right. right. I mean, so that won't be a problem. No problem. Uh, okay. You know, if you can just try and get some message to me. Building friendship takes time. But encouraging dialogue with your students and sharing your own experiences with them can speed up the process. Dialogues not only reduce the initial reluctance to talk, but also help you determine the student's basic skills. Begin by asking general questions okay, about well, the student's um, background, like the courses they are taking, you and you their goals. This information will help you plan future sessions. Oh yeah, one other thing. Have you had any other English courses? Um, not here at UCLA, but I've had English, English 3. Okay, so you, right. Yeah. And that's the last English course you took? Right. Okay. And that was three years ago. Okay. So we are going to be talking a lot about sort of themes and how you write an essay. And we'll be doing some workshops on essay writing. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. From that, I take it you haven't had much English, right? Uh, not here also. also. I took it at my junior college. You had English 3? Right. Right. Okay. English 3 and 4. Okay, good. So you've had some practice with writing about literature. Right. Very good. Okay. Some, but it was a while back. What's your standing now? I'm a senior. I'm graduating this quarter also. Oh, oh, that's great. But I'll be back. <laughs> okay. Oh, for grad school? Mm -hmm. Do you know, well, what's your major? Theater arts. Actually, I think you can bring your theater arts background right. to this a lot. I'm hoping that will help. Yeah, I'm sure it will. You've had to write papers for theater arts classes, right, haven't the history, you? Right, the history, 5A and B, I mean 5A, B, C class. Did Reading you have to write the, um, papers in theater mm -hmm. arts at all? It is best to ask the kind of questions that require more than a yes or no answer. Of the three strategies, creating rapport is the most difficult. Sometimes we don't listen to our students. Sometimes we lose patience. And at other times, we're not as open as we'd like to be. Nevertheless, listening, patience, and openness are three important qualities in a tutor or a friend. 
In this episode, Elisa fails to listen. She's not open to what the student is trying to say. And at the same time, she displays a lack of patience. Three problems reflecting a lack of rapport. Look, look at how Meg's life is described. She has her baby house. Her lawn as big as a pocket handkerchief. As we talked about that, she was, it was a very narrow life. That very she's narrow, the, very confined. The, Meg's the tot- band box. Right. Meg's totally absorbed in her babies and her husband, and that's it. When she tries to, you know, expand her horizons a little bit, she asks John to explain the election to her, and John seriously explains the election. And what does Meg do? She doesn't like it. She decides that politics is just about as bad as mathematics. Traditionally male areas, right? And what does she show real interest in? Make it so in a hat or something. Her bonnet. Yeah. She's trimming a bonnet for herself, and that's all she's really interested in. It, it's but exactly John's what you just said. I'm not listening that well. Um, I'm waiting for a particular word, and I'm waiting for a particular explanation, which I have in my head. And of course, that same idea can be expressed in a lot of different ways, but if I'm not really there, and I'm not really listening, it's only that key word that I want to hear. So they will say something which is ex- actually exactly what I I'm trying to lead towards, but they use a different word or a different means of expression, and I think, oh, well, I have to clarify. When, in fact, it, it really, I could see from the tape that what they'd said was clear, and I really didn't have to clarify. As you see, she knows better, but tutors make mistakes, too, especially after tutoring for four or five hours in a row. Elisa is too concerned about helping the students be absolutely right to actually listen. When tutors face a silent or perplexed student, often they tend to become nervous and want to fill the silence. But patience, starting with the first tutorial session, communicates confidence both in yourself and in the students. It's it's extraordinary how he could cast upon you the spirit of his illusion. What what is Marlowe talking about? Now here I'm not sure. Uh, okay. He's talking of Jim's illusion, right? But his illusion of what? I'm not sure. His illusion. The next level. His illusion of. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know of any illusion that he has in the situation. So it is true mm-hmm. that in terms of anatomy, blood types, uh, muscle attachment. What illusion does he have? There's a really big illusion he has, Robert. And the illusion of himself. Okay, that can be part of it. What does he think is going on? That the boat is sinking. That the boat is sinking. Oh, okay, now I get it. By being patient and by sharing the control of the session, Gail allows Robert time to arrive at the answer himself and take a few steps towards becoming an independent learner. By being open to what Ingrid wants, Mike helps her achieve the same result. Okay, good deal. So do you want to start in on the... uh, Yeah, this stuff. This stuff right here? Yeah, I, I, barely, I could barely visualize these here. Okay, this is what we just want to go over it in the book. Should I quiz you on it? How do you want to do it? Yeah, just over the book. Over the book? Okay, let's go over them. Okay. Okay. No cheese. No cheese. <laughs> What's going on on the... Uh... Okay. The general strategies we've suggested for discussing expectations, encouraging dialogue, and creating rapport should be applied from your very first session with the students. A good tutoring relationship is a personal one, but it takes time to nurture it. The kind of interaction you'll see here between Elisa and Tracy as they discuss Alcott's Little Women is their reward for their long, patient work. I think, I think she herself was very conflicted. She, she seems to have had a, an incredibly strong streak of independence and self-worth as an artist, mm-hmm. and at the same time really longed for the kind of domestic love that she shows, you know, her heroine skills. I think that's what every woman really feels. Yeah, I don't think it's changed, to tell you the truth. No, but I think there's the more freedom for your ambition now. Yeah, but I, like, I, in myself, I think that, for me, um, that there was always that very strong conflict between, um, 
you know, wanting to be my own independent person and, and wanting to have a secure home and wanting to have love and marriage. Not feel threatened. Yeah. I mean, I'm really surprised myself marrying as young as I did. I mean, it wasn't that young, 25. Oh, I got married when I was 25, too. But I never, I never wanted to get married. It. Yeah. Exactly. I never wanted to have a kid. Right. And it's funny it turned out that way, isn't I know, it? me too, but I'm still, I, I'm glad that I'm still doing everything, or else I would not be happy with both of those, but I'm, that's why I'm happy with both of those. Sure. You've, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You've got both. In this tape, we have talked about three main strategies that tutors can use in their first tutorial session in order to get off on the right foot. While discussing mutual expectations, agree on an oral contract that includes tutorial policies and mutual responsibilities. Encourage the students to talk to you so you can help them get over their initial reluctance and determine their basic skill level. Finally, you can go a long way in creating rapport by listening to your students and being patient and open to their suggestions.